Hello children and welcome to the session today. Today we are going to dive into the wonderful world of light, shadows and reflections. So children before we enter the chapter let us quickly pick up an activity from your own book. Switch off all the light fittings in your room at night. What do you see? I am sure you can tell me the answer without actually doing the activity. The answer is that we cannot see anything. So what is the importance of light then? Light helps us to see things. Now suppose you are standing in the sun. What do you see behind you? You see your shadow. And when you look into the mirror, what do you see? You see your reflection. So that is what we are going to learn today. Light, shadows and reflection. So children, based on how the objects behave in front of light, we can divide the objects into three. Objects can also be classified as transparent, translucent and opaque, depending on how much light can pass through them. Objects like clear glass, clean water, cellophane paper allow light to pass through them. We can see things clearly through them. They are called transparent materials. Objects like butter paper, grounded glass and tissue paper allow only some light to pass through them and we cannot see clearly through them. Such materials are called translucent materials. Objects like metals, wooden tables, bricked wall do not allow any light to pass through them. We cannot see anything through them. They are called opaque materials. So for example, we talk about a book. When light falls on a book, what do you think will happen? Will the book allow the light to pass through it? No. So what is a book? A book is an opaque object. If I pass light through a glass window, what will happen? Light will pass through it. When light will pass through the glass window, I can see exactly what is outside the window. So a glass window is transparent. And third, if I try to pass light through maybe a butter paper, what will happen? I will be able to see that there is light through the butter paper, but I cannot see what is behind the butter paper. This is because they only allow some light to pass through them. Such objects are called translucent. So these are the three kinds of objects in our surroundings. And where does this light come from? This light in all the cases can come from either natural sources or man-made sources. What are the examples of natural sources of light? They are fireflies, they are the star and the sun. The sun is the most important source of light that helps life to exist on earth. And what are the man-made sources of light? They are bulb, candle and torch. So children, all these sources of light help us to see objects. Now all the objects that have got light of their own are known as luminous object. So a bulb, a candle, a torch, sun, stars, fireflies, these are all luminous objects. Whereas what is a book? A book has got no light of its own. So what is it called? It is known as non-luminous object. Do you know that the moon is also a non-luminous object because a moon does not have light of its own. What light does it reflect? It reflects the light of the sun. Magic, isn't it? Okay now, moving on to the movement of light. Light always travels in a straight line. Now in order to understand this, let us perform a little experiment. Fix a lighted candle on a table. 
Look at the candle through a straight rubber tube with one eye. Keep the other eye closed. You will be able to see the candle flame. Next, bend the rubber tube in the middle and try looking at the candle flame through it. You are not able to see it. You can thus conclude that light travels in a straight line. This is also called the rectilinear movement of light. So we have understood that light travels in a straight line. This picture that I have drawn here, a straight line with an arrow head. This is known as a ray of light. Now if I draw many rays like this, what does it become? It becomes a beam of light. Now when this beam of light will hit an object that is opaque, what is going to happen? As you can see in this picture, a shadow will be formed, right? Because this object which is opaque does not allow light to pass through it. That is why this shadow. Looking carefully at the shadow, we come to know that number one, a shadow is always black in color. Number two, a shadow is always formed behind the opaque object. Number three, a shadow will always be formed when there is a ground, a screen behind the object. To give you a simple example, if there is a bird flying very high in the sky, very high, the light is falling on the bird, bird is opaque, but there is no shadow of the bird because the bird is right in the middle of air. Whereas when this bird will fly closer to the ground, there will be a screen under the bird. At that moment, the bird's shadow will fall on the ground. So these are the basic characteristics of the shadow. Always black in color, formed opposite to the source of light. That means always formed behind the object. A screen is always required to form a shadow. And also, the object has to be opaque. Now, this game of light and shadows also takes place in nature between the heavenly bodies. And these are known as eclipses. So, there are times when we are not able to see the sun. Why is that? Because when we try to see the sun from the earth, the moon comes between the sun and the earth. So the shadow of the moon falls on the sun because of which you are not able to see the sun. This is called the solar eclipse. Now when the sun comes between the earth and the moon, then what happens? From the earth we are not able to see the moon. This is called lunar eclipse. At times of lunar and solar eclipse, what are we advised to do? We are advised to not look at the heavenly bodies directly because a lot of radiation is coming out. Right children? The next important part of the chapter is a very fun game that you all can do. It is making of a pinhole camera. From a pinhole camera, you can actually create and look at pictures. How do we do this? Let's watch a video and understand. Images of different objects can be seen using a pinhole camera. It is based on the principle that light travels in a straight line. Take a medium-sized cardboard box and blacken the inside of the box with black paint. Make a tiny hole, a pinhole on one side of the cardboard box using a pin. Cut out a rectangular portion of the side of the cardboard box opposite to the one on which the pinhole was made. Cover this part with butter paper or grounded glass. They will act as a screen. The pinhole camera is ready. Place a candle on a table and light it with a matchstick. Place the pinhole camera a few inches away from the lighted candle, with the side having the pinhole facing the candle. Move the pinhole camera forward and backward till you get a clear image of the candle flame on the screen. The image formed will be colored and inverted. This is because light travels in a straight line. So here children, after having understood light, 
and shadows let us understand reflection what is reflection if you closely look at the picture you will see that when a beam of light is falling on this mirror a beam of light coming from the torch is falling on the mirror when these rays are reflected this is how you see your image in front of the mirror because the light is reflected by the mirror so children i hope you have thoroughly understood the concept of light the concept of objects that are opaque transparent and translucent the various sources of light shadows how shadows are formed eclipses the two kinds of eclipses and also reflections so time for you to attempt the questions at the back Thank you.